Hi students, in this video we're going to cover the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. In this video we're going to prove the derivative for sine inverse and tangent inverse. Left as additional practice are the other four inverse trig functions. <coughs> Alright, so for example one we have to derive a formula for sine inverse of f of x. Let's do a geometric explanation of what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have the sine sine inverse of f of x is equal to y. What that means is that there is some angle y whose sine is the opposite side, which is f of x, divided by a hypotenuse value of 1. If we did the Pythagorean theorem, we would get that the adjacent side is 1 minus f of x squared. You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So... This statement is the exact same thing as saying the sine for angle y is equal to some function f of x. Now, if we do a derivative on both sides of this equation, we would get cosine y implicit differentiation. So cosine y dy over dx is equal to f prime of x. Now, say we want, of course, we want to isolate the dy over dx, so we get dy over dx is equal to f prime of x divided by the cosine of angle y. So now remember for this right triangle that we've constructed, we have our opposite, adjacent, and our hypotenuse. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we're going to get f prime of x divided by the cosine of y, which is the square root of 1 minus f of x squared. So what we have is dy over dx is this expression, and it is also the derivative of that equation. So what we learned is the derivative of sine inverse of a function is equal to the derivative of the function divided by the square root of 1 minus the function itself squared. There's a, simil a very similar process for doing this for tangent inverse of f of x. See, pause the video and see if you can come up with this. Okay, so if you're unpausing the video to uh, join me again, we would have, all right, so for tangent, it's going to be almost the same thing. We're going to have some angle y. It has a tangent value of f of x, so f of x divided by 1. And the, the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 1 plus f of x squared, again, using the Pythagorean theorem. So... If tangent inverse of f of x equals y, that's the same as knowing the tangent of y is equal to f of x. And again, if we take a derivative, that's going to give us secant squared y dy over dx is equal to f prime of x. And... If we divide by secant squared, we get dy over dx is f prime of x divided by secant squared x. Now remember, if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we know that the cosine for an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, Remember, secant is its reciprocal, so that's going to be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. So we're going to have f prime of x divided by, so the hypotenuse, and we have to square it. So we're going to have the square root of 1 plus f of x squared squared. And if we simplify that, we get f prime of x divided by 1 plus f of x squared. So for tangent inverse, we have the derivative of 
tangent inverse of f of x is the derivative of the function divided by 1 plus the function squared. Those are the two big ones that we need to know. Uh, below, we have a table that covers the other four. Now, again, we've already done tangent inverse and sine inverse. And if you look at cosine inverse and cotangent inverse, the only difference is, um, oh, the cotangent should be negative, but the only difference is a sine. And we're really never going to use uh, secant inverse and cosecant inverse. So for example three, we actually get into some calculus where we are writing the equation of a tangent line. So we have to write the equation of the tangent line for a tangent inverse uh, of one half, I mean a tangent inverse of two X at the point one half pi over four. So we are, we are already given the point, so we just need to find the slope. So F prime of X is going to be now, according to our rule, it is the derivative of the input, which is 2, divided by 1 plus the input squared, which is going to be 2 divided by 1 plus 4x squared. And to get the slope at this point, we're going to evaluate at 1 half, and that's going to give us 2 divided by 1 plus 4 times 1 half squared which is uh, one half squared is a fourth, one fourth times four is one, and one plus one is two. So we end up with two over two, which is one. So remember that this is our slope. So then the equation of the tangent line is y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus our given x coordinate. If you want to fully simplify, you get y equals x minus one half plus pi over four. You can stop there. For example, four, we are doing something similar where we have um, sine inverse x times x minus one. So for this derivative, we're going to need to do the product rule. So f prime of x is going to be... All right, so the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. So sine inverse of x times 1, because that's the derivative of x minus 1, plus the derivative of sine inverse x, which is the derivative of the x, which is 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. And that is going to be multiplied by x minus 1. And we want to evaluate this at the point one half. So F prime of a half is going to be sine inverse of one half plus, all right, so one half minus one is negative one half. And we're going to divide by the square root of one plus a half, which is uh, one fourth. Uh, and so sine inverse of one half, what angle has a sine value of a half? That is pi divided by six. So pi over six plus, all right, so let's do some side work. The square root of one plus one fourth is uh, the square root of five over, so it's the square root of five over the square root of four, which is the square root of five halves. So what we have is negative one half divided by the square root of five divided by two, which is just negative, I mean, pi over six plus, well, we'll say minus, uh, minus, uh, we said one over the square root of five. So this is our slope. Looks ugly, but that is our slope. Uh, and so when we write the equation of our line, we're going to have y minus negative pi divided by 12 equals the slope, which is pi over 6 minus 1 over square root 5 times x minus uh, 1 half. All right. So, again, process is exactly the same. To write the equation of a tangent line, you need a point on the line and the slope at that point. 
uh, and that's it. We don't have to actually simplify. We're good here. For example, five, we're going to be writing the second derivative of the function. So for tangent inverse, we're going to have f prime of x is, so tangent inverse is the derivative of the, the input, which is 1 over x divided by 1 plus the function squared. Now, if we simplify this, this is 1 over x times 1 plus the ln of x uh, plus ln squared x. And there are a couple of ways to think about this. Uh, we're going to have to do the quotient rule. Or, I mean, technically, we can do the uh, product rule. Uh, let's just go with the quotient rule. So for the second derivative, we're going to have the low function, which is x times the ln. So ln squared x plus 1. Uh, and then all of this is multiplied by the derivative of 1, which is 0, and then minus the numerator, which is 1, and times the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the denominator is the derivative of x, which is 1, multiplied by 1 plus ln squared x, and then plus the derivative of 1 plus ln squared x, which is, so we're looking at really the derivative of ln squared x, which is 2 ln x to the first power times 1 over x. So plus 2 ln x divided by x, and all of this is divided by um, x squared times 1 plus ln squared x squared. So we square both terms in our denominator. If you are so inclined, um, you could keep working. The first term turns into, how did I get rid of, my pencil disappeared, no. All right, so hold on a moment. I'm experiencing technical difficulties. Uh, backspace that, no, get out of here. No. All right. Nope. All right. We're back. I, I apologize for that. This uh, keyboard uh, went haywire on me. Um, let's move this over here. So uh, my apologies. So we get. Um, all right. So this first term totally wipes out. That's a zero. And so then we have. You could multiply this term by an X in the numerator. That would give us. Uh, we'll write this over here. Negative x times 1 plus ln squared x plus 2 ln x. And all of that is going to be divided by x, which would then be multiplied by the x in our denominator, which would give us x cubed, L, uh, x cubed, well, ln squared x plus 1 squared. Addition is commutative, so it won't matter. These are exactly the same thing. All right, so that is the second derivative of the tangent inverse of ln x. So to do that, again, we did the derivative of ln x divided by 1 plus ln x squared to get our first derivative. And then we use the product rule and quotient rule and chain rule, actually, to get our second derivative. And for our last example, we have sine inverse of e to the x. So our first derivative is the derivative of the input, which is e to the x, then divided by the square root of 1 plus e to the x squared. Now, if we rewrite that, that's going to give us e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the 2x to the 1 half power. Our second derivative is going to use the quotient rule. So we're going to have 1 plus e to the 2x to the 1 half times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, minus the numerator, which is e to the x, 
times the derivative of our denominator, which is one half one plus e to the two x to the negative one half, then multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is two e to the two x. And all of that is divided by one plus e to the two x. Uh, now squared is gonna mean we square the square root, which would just give us to the first power. Now if we wanna make this look good, uh, we would get, so this expression is, if we simplify this, we're gonna have, we can multiply this term and the two e to the two x times a half. So the two and a half are going to cancel and so that's going to give us minus e to the 3x divided by 1 plus e to the 2x to the 1 half. And so we're going to use a similar trick where we um, get a common denominator because this term is technically in our, de not technically, it is in our denominator. We're going to multiply it by that term to get a common denominator for the first term. So that would give us one plus e to the two x to the first power times e to the x minus e to the three x. And all of that is going to be divided by one plus e to the two x to the three halves power. Now, again, if you're so inclined, you can keep going. You would get e to the x plus e to the 3x minus e to the 3x divided by 1 plus e to the 2x to the 3 halves, which, of course, just gives us e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the x to the 3 halves, a very simple second derivative. All right, so that's going to conclude our video on the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Again, the formulas are right here. We've uh, derived two of them. To derive the other three is very similar. All right, so I will see you all in class. If you have questions, please ask. Otherwise, have a great day.